Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com with another weekly video. Today, we're talking about welding lap joints in stainless steel sheet and some tips on tack welding and some tips on amperage. And just like a lot of things with TIG welding, a lot of the work is in the prep work. And so get a good fit up with no gap. Make sure you wipe it down good with acetone. That's really about all it needs. And in order to get a good fit up, you can use a little homemade tool like the one I have here. It's just an old screwdriver with some silicon bronze weld metal uh, welded on the end and then sanded off to where there's kind of like a little angle on it. And I place that right next to where I want to put the tack, put pressure downward, and set the amperage to what I'm going to weld at. And then I go full pedal pretty quickly to get that first tack. Now I've got, I'm using a strong hand fixture point table here and I could I could put a clamp on there and and use the clamp to hold this stuff down but a lot of people don't have a table like this and so I'm just showing you a quick and handy way to do it plus this is just really the quickest way using both hands one hand to fusion tack the other hand to hold down and because of that silicon bronze number one it won't contaminate the stainless with carbon steel number two it draws heat out really quickly and you can put it right dead next to where you're going to put the tack and it'll prevent the uh, the puddle from wicking over and melting off that edge and this is especially important on stuff like you know when you start getting thin thin sheet metal like thirty thousands twenty thousands this becomes really handy and helps a lot in getting tiny tiny tacks on there without uh, peeling away that corner with the amperage plus you can light up on that copper alloy part of it if you have a machine that doesn't have as soft a start as you want you can put it right next to there and actually light up on the uh, copper alloy part of it and then bring the arc down if you if you need to. Here's a tip for you. Use small tacks. Make sure that they're smaller than the final weld. That way you won't see them when you're done welding. Now here's a little close-up of how that... I just prop the cup on there, point the tip of that electrode right where I want the tack, give it a quick blast of amperage, and now I've got a really small, tight, clean tack that, that hardly discolors at all and, and uh, typically won't melt through because it's so quick. Also, you want to put tacks fairly often. Now, this is just a little small piece that I've got on the bench here, so I'm only putting tacks every two or three inches, but actually, if this was a, a actual job, I might actually put a tack every inch because you don't, want, you don't want that joint opening up with you. Any kind of gap in a thin lap joint like this will just cause problems. And at a lot of, a lot of jobs, like a lot of food service type jobs, kitchenware and things like that, you just do a little fusion weld here. You won't even use filler metal. And in that case, you really don't want a gap at all because you know, you don't have any filler metal to fill the gap. All right, here's another tip. And this one is a really important one. It's so important. I'm going to, I'm going to show you an example toward the end of this video, but get started quickly. Get that puddle started going quickly. Stainless steel is not very thermally conductive, so heat builds up very quickly. And if you don't get started quickly and get out of the gate quickly, heat builds up and you just can't outrun it. And you're going to get a dull weld, you're going to get more distortion and everything. So get that puddle going within like a second or two and get moving, get rod in there and get, get moving out. That's a big one. Now right here I'm using somewhere between 44 and 50 amps. It's hard to tell exactly. Machines all vary just a little bit. You know, they're all going to vary... Uh, anywhere from one amp to as much as 10 amps as far as what the display is and what you're actually welding. But later in the video we'll talk about a, kind of a, a tip for, for setting. All right, let's, let's take a look at this now. I've been using this stubby gas lens kit with a number six there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and swap back to the standard style uh, collet body to, just to show you the difference between the two at a certain stick out. The, the, the standard collet body and setup works okay in certain situations and here I'm going to run that electrode out about 7 sixteenths of an inch and you can convert that to metrics however you want using the ruler there. I've got both of them on there. But about 7 sixteenths of an inch using 20 CFH gas didn't really make it happen here. and You can see the results here in just a minute because even the, even the puddle wasn't flowing right. When, when you don't have good gas shielding on stainless steel it makes the puddle much more squirrely. It, it's sluggish. It, it takes a little bit more amperage to make it flow, or or you have to go slower. It doesn't it doesn't wet in like it's supposed to, and it just doesn't doesn't look good. Now these cups work okay under certain or certain circumstances, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But I just want to just want to show you a direct comparison here with a seven sixteenth stick out and the same exact um, gas flow. That's that's not what what anybody's after when they're welding stainless steel. So here I'm going to extend the extend the electrode actually at least seven sixteenths. It's probably closer to a half inch, 
using the same size cup but using the stubby gas lens kit on this big 26 air-cooled torch which actually makes it a whole lot nicer and we're gonna we're gonna compare same gas flow same everything and right away you can see I'm getting a little bit better results right actually a whole lot better results wetting in better I'm able to move on out at a, at a nice rate and that's gonna wind up just with better a better overall well with better appearance less distortion because I can motor on out a little bit better I know I'm going backwards here from showing backwards, but I'm, I'm having to film one way and, and and get the arc shots going in a different direction, but it's very representative of what was going on there. So that's that's a big difference. That's like night and day. Now, the one on the left obviously is using the standard, the standard cup and the one on the right using the gas lens cup. Now here's an example again of what I talked about earlier about getting going quickly, getting a puddle established and get moving quickly. I'm going to show this again in just a second. From the time I light up to the time I get rod in there and get moving is not much more than a second. And that is kind of what you need to shoot for. Let's look at it here. Boom. 1001. And I'm moving. You don't want to hang around and get your bifocals lined up with your cheater lens and stuff and, you know, and take 5 or 10 seconds to ever get rod in there. That's, that's going to give you problems with stainless steel. You need to you know, have things adjusted so that you can see what's going on as soon as you light up get rod in there now I don't want to I don't want to give the impression that these cups are no good I'm gonna use a much shorter stick out here um, more like a quarter inch or so and I'm getting pretty decent results there I've also got it sped up a little bit but, but the point is once you get that stick out to a certain point you're just not going to get that good of results with a standard cup and, and a gas lens is going to work a lot better alright there is a rule of thumb that says that about one amp per one thousandth of thickness will get you in the ballpark well that's really based on carbon steel stainless doesn't need that much amperage it only takes about two-thirds of an amp per one thousand so one way to set a machine is especially if you don't have any good numbers on the dial or if you don't feel like it's that accurate or maybe there's a pair of vice grips instead of an amperage knob figure out the amperage it takes to do a fusion well without filler metal and then add about ten percent to that with filler metal so what you're watching here is just me using a little bit of the corner for filler metal with no, no filler metal added and it's taking 40 amps and that's just about right. And adding about 10% to that or you could just say add a little bit, add 5 amps, just add a little bit if you're using filler metal and you'll be right in the ballpark. Again, that's 44 amps to do this, to do this puddle right here. Now, what is the rule of 33? I've been talking about that in a lot of videos. It's basically if you have an inverter that's got pulse capability on it, 33 pulses a second with 33% on time for the pulse and 33% background is a really good starting place and it works exceptionally well on thin, uh, thin stainless like this in keeping the heat down and moving that puddle along with a minimal amperage. But you got to have an inverter. Most transformers, none of them that I know of, are capable of 33 pulses a second. And I don't want to watch anything that's slower than that. 20 pulses a second is just really hard to watch. All right, here's another tip for you real quick. If you can't get that puddle going, if something gets in your way and it keeps you from getting that puddle going quickly, just stop. Like I was on the end right there and it, it took me an extra second to get the two to join. Instead of just keeping going, I just stopped, let it cool for 30 seconds or so and then lit up again and then things go a lot better because once that heat builds up, even if it's on the end, it's hard to outrun it. So if, it, if you have to hesitate at all, just stop and let it cool. This video marks a, a uh, kind of a milestone. You know, I've, I've been selling my TIG finger on my website, my DVDs of, uh, you know, I put all the YouTube videos every year that I do on a DVD and I offer those for sale. And I sell t-shirts and that all helps pay the bills and, and uh, you know, keeps me in this weekly video habit that I've, that I've gotten into. Well, it's time to kind of step it up a notch to the next level and I'm gonna start selling a few other, ex a few other products. But I only wanna sell good ones. I only want to sell. I only want to sell things that I can vouch for that I've used, and I don't want complaints. I don't want problems, you know. So, so um, I bought a a stubby gas lens kit made by CK Worldwide a couple years ago, and this is something I can really vouch for. And I actually even got with CK, and I had them kit together a, a certain kit that's unique for 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 you, for people that I, I think you know are the kind of people that watch my my videos. And so uh, 
the kit previously had a went down to a 040 electro but only up to a 332nd so I just kind of moved it up went up to an eighth but only down to a 16th that makes more sense to me and I've also made sure that they are 2% lanthanated because I think that that's the best all around electro so real quick let me show you what's in this kit and what everything looks like you got three different cup sizes, gas lens cups, six, seven, and eight, along with collet bodies and collets to match. The little white ring there is an insulator ring, and that is the adapter that makes the stubby collet body work and makes everything fit right. But that, that does two things. It's a gasket to seal to make sure you're not sucking any air into the argon, but it's also a heat barrier to keep that heat from the cup from transferring into your torch body and messing it up. Let me show you real quickly how to swap it off here. I've done this already, but this is a nice CK trim line air cooled, 17 air cooled torch. And by putting the little stubby kit together on it, it turns this thing into what's almost as small as a small water cooled torch, except it's air cooled. And it'll still, it'll still handle a good 150 amps, and actually it'll handle 200 amps for short periods. Even this big Trafomet style torch, it's a big 17 Trafomet style, and I'm really not crazy about it, but it putting the stubby kit on it makes it actually usable. So there it is again. And also to make this thing a much better value, I'm offering a free bonus DB disc. And here's some of the highlights of what comes on that bonus disc. Some stuff on tips on what not to do as well as what to do on lap joints, a little pulse TIG welding on aluminum tubing, thin wall aluminum tubing that's about 63 thousandths wall, one inch diameter, pulsing with the foot pedal as well as doing some using the trigger switch and then also a little bit of uh, socket welds using a couple of different techniques like this walk in the cup technique. You know, I did a video a couple of weeks ago about heat input. That's included on there as well as just some, just some good arc shots on doing T-joints and lap joints and all kinds of things like that. There's a lay wire technique done on this big chunk of 4140 steel and talked about preheating and some, some uh, considerations there using a big chunk of stainless steel to as backing for filling in a big gap on a big chunk of aluminum. It's a vertical uphill, uh, a vertical uphill butt joint and 11 gauge tips for doing that. Using the rule of 33 on pulse TIG for welding near an edge. I explain that in, in detail. It's one of the videos that's on this bonus DVD. Some TIG welding stainless steel on some shafting and straightening techniques and then a 2G horizontal 11 gauge butt joint tips for doing that. Or you can see the full offer for this gas lens uh, stubby kit at weldmonger.com or weldmongerstore.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.